All right, you know, these bipartisan calls, too, for President Biden to finally say something and give Americans answers on these aerial objects. Watch. I have real concerns about why the uh, administration is not being more forthcoming with everything that it knows. The, the Biden administration needs to stop briefing Congress through our television sets and actually come and sit down and brief us. The military needs to have a plan to not only determine uh, what's out there, but determine the dangers that go with it. I believe the American people uh, are owed an explanation. If they're serious enough for us to send fighter jets out to shoot down, then I think it's, uh, it's okay for the American people to know who's behind this. John Ratcliffe, former director of national intelligence, sir, thank you for your time. You've been on the other side of this uh, previously in the administration with, uh, with Donald Trump. What would explain why we know so little, why they're telling us so little so far? Well, I think you have to look at this in the big picture, Bill. Um, uh, I think they're still analyzing what we'll call uh, objects numbers two, three, and four. Um, but what we're getting is a clear picture that one of these is not like the other. And so it goes back to, um, you know, this may be a simple, uh, as simple as an overreaction to an underreaction. So we know that the first object was a spy balloon. It was 200 feet high. It had a payload uh, bay and a surveillance bay. Uh, we've been told the numbers two, three, and four uh, have none of those things and are, are, are maybe as little as one-tenth of the size uh, not maneuverable, drifting with the wind. So, uh, and even, Bill, the other thing is the excuses that we were told why number one, the Chinese spy balloon, uh, couldn't be shot down have now drifted away with numbers two, three, and four. In other words, we were told, well, we can't shoot it down over Alaska. Well, the second object was. We were told that it couldn't be shot down um, over land or near civilians or over the continental U.S., and that went away with numbers three and four. So, um, you know, again, I think that this goes back to one of these is not like the other. The first one was badly mismanaged. And I think some of this, uh, the Biden administration is really scrambling uh, and don't have an explanation uh, or aren't giving explanations for what they're doing with uh -huh. uh, different objects, is numbers two, three, and four. So what I hear from that answer is that they don't know yet. They're putting this together. Michael McCall has a different explanation. Here he is from Sunday. These uh, spy balloons have great capability to gather and collect intelligence. Uh, the imagery that they can capture and other intelligence data that I can't be specific about uh, can be captured and then transmitted back to the mothership in Beijing. Uh, they have control over these balloons. You know, this was an act of espionage in plain sight, plain view of the American people. All right, now that last point. This is espionage in plain sight. Is that the case? Well, he's absolutely right. That's absolutely right about the first instance. That was a dedicated flight path over our most sensitive uh, military sites, nuclear sites, critical infrastructure, um, you know, from end to end, a transcontinental voyage with respect to the Chinese spy balloon. But what you heard from the NORAD commander is, with numbers two, three, and four, they're not characterizing them as balloons. They're not characterizing them as Chinese. They're not characterizing them as even spy balloons. And they're saying that they're drifting slowly. They're not maneuverable. They're, they have very different characteristics. So we simply don't know. But, Bill, the point is this, is people are filling in the blanks and speculating because the Biden administration is not addressing this. They're not being transparent. They're not giving good explanations. Uh, you know, for, for what's going on here. And I think that that's a, a huge misstep and a disservice to the American people who, who shouldn't be um, having to speculate about this. Yeah. And our lawmakers should be getting apprised by the intelligence community and the military community. I, I, I've, I've got 30 seconds left here. I, I agree with everything you just said there. The weekend serves as a distraction for millions of Americans. So too is the game that was played here. It's Monday. Would you expect to give us them to give us an explanation today in full? Yes, absolutely. I think they, uh, you know, uh, think about it this way, Bill. With respect to items number, the objects numbers two, three, and four, if these were aircraft that went down that had potential survivors or passengers, they would be there. They would be, they would find a way to be there and to collect the information. So they, they, to say that, well, we haven't been able to recover everything or get to it, we don't have much information, is really just buying time to try and how to explain. They've got to give those explanations, uh, and they've got to give them quickly. I think people have, have they've run out of rope on this.
But I think the thing to keep in mind Sir, is, at the end of the day, what we do know Go ahead, is, is that China, it, China, China is the threat that many of us have been saying for years. Don't lose sight of the first episode, which was a dedicated spy mission that was successful for China and a national security failure for the United States. John Ratcliffe, thank you for your time. Former head of the DNI, thank you, sir. We await those answers today. You bet. With bated breath. We'll talk soon. You bet. Back to Dana in New York now. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.